Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Dark Tomb Bloodthorn Island, which is brought to you by Cause Games. It's for one to five players, ages 12 and up, and games generally run about 20 to 50 minutes. Dark Tomb Bloodthorn Island is the next adventure in the Dark Tomb series. It's an ultra portable tabletop dungeon crawler in which a group of uniquely skilled characters must navigate to Bloodthorn Island and defeat the evil land serpent Lorgon. Characters are fully interchangeable with the original Dark Tomb and players will work together through three stages, collecting items, battling monsters, and exploring tiles. On each turn, players can choose from a variety of attacks, movement, or other abilities in addition to utilizing items encountered. If the party fully explores a stage and defeats all monsters, they conquer it and move on to the next. If they fail in their quest, they can recoup and try again. Map tiles, monsters, and items are randomized so every playthrough is unique. Welcome to Bloodthorn Island. So, if you don't know Dark Tomb, definitely check out my original preview. It takes place in a crypt, and it's a very different type of adventure. But here, we're going to have several new things beyond that version. And this one definitely is a standalone, but again, you can combine the two to do various things with all the characters and so forth. But you're going to get four new characters. I'm going to be focusing on Forge because I think he is my favorite for sure. And you're going to have new gear. You're going to have new monsters to deal with, new environments to move around. And in the new environments, you're going to have a boat that holds all four characters. And on your turn, you'll be able to move this boat up to three spaces, and it will also drift another two because you're on the water. And if you hit rapids, you have to move through those rapids until you're clear of them. And monsters can still move through water and just attack you like normal, and everything is still moving orthogonal. However, you do check line of sight from the center of a square to the center of another square. So it's, that can be checked diagonal. But in general, you're just moving orthogonally through the dungeon and on the water, even with the boat. So that's just a quick rundown of what's new, but for those who have not seen this game, let me give you a quick look at how it plays. Now you have stages. I have all three set up here. You wouldn't normally do that. This is just for show. You would start with stage one, stage two, then go to stage three, once you've beaten each of them, moving through them. Now you don't have to move through them chronologically. You could just start at one in the middle if you like a specific stage and so forth. But you're gonna choose your character. You're gonna put your cube on the max number of health that you have. You're gonna put one of the cubes in the starting position, starting tile, and that starting tile will have a story to kick things off. The story will show you the diagram of the dungeon. The rest of the cards are gonna go face down. But your character, you'll have one cube left over. So every time you take an action in this game, you will place that cube on your action and it won't be available to you on your next turn. So you have to make some tough choices and through the course of play, you could burn a turn to kind of discard an action, so to say, one that maybe you're, no one's in range to shoot, but you could know that you're not gonna be using it next turn and so forth. So it is giving you some options as you choose actions and what to do and how you're gonna work cooperatively with your other players. So yes, each of these stages is gonna start off with a setup card, giving you a bit of story and how again the dungeon gets set up. Also, there will be a conclusion card with a more story as you move through the campaign. But here we have the South Docks. And this setup card will give you some story based on what you're trying to do. Here in this first stage, you're obviously trying to find a boat. You need transportation. And from there, you're gonna have to reveal all the tiles and defeat all the monsters. It's really that straightforward. So the game does play up to five. You can actually have four players on characters and then a fifth player will play the stage or all the monsters taking this card. And you'll go in turn order, all the characters will go and then the stage will go. So on your character's turn, you're gonna do basic things. There's some free actions you can do like turning over tiles as you search. Now as you search and reveal tiles, any white cubes or any white spaces will be put with white cubes on the board showing that there's items there for you to pick up. You just need to cross over it and pick it up. And you can also hand off items to other players. You can't stop in their space, but you can move through their space and as you move through, you can hand items to other players. Any black squares that you uncover are going to be monsters. Now, you'll draw a monster card and match the symbol of that monster card to the black cube. The other cube is gonna go on the monster's health. And it's all straightforward what the monster does in their turn. It's all on their card. You're gonna follow the stage turn when they activate. But for players, first thing you're doing is that you move. If you choose not to move, then you can perform one of your actions. All kinds of different actions here based on the different types of characters. 
So each of the characters on their main character card will show their movement, their armor, and their health. And your other two cards, your action cards, will be the ones that you're working from. But a lot of the game is you moving around the dungeon exploring and you'll be using a lot of your movement. So you also have a dash extra action movement that gives you the ability to move even further. So, and you can use dash on your boat as well, but you only get to move one space when you do. Now, the thing with the different types of attacks, you're gonna be doing that quite frequently. Obviously, when you move and engage with a monster, you'll see there's basically three different numbers. You have a modifier, you're gonna be rolling your dice, you add your modifier, and then you check the range, and then how much damage you do. And you have to meet or beat the villain or the enemy's armor class in order to do damage to them. And it's really that simple. That's what you're doing. Now there's several different types of attacks. You can actually have some attacks that go through walls. You can hit multiple targets. You can shoot around corners. It just depends on your character and their ability. So lots of different options and having all the characters in play really does help. So then the basics of a turn is simply each player in turn will move first, then activate an action, marking it with a cube. And then you have those several free actions as you move around the dungeon, you can flip tiles for free, you can pick up items for free, you can trade items for free, and it's really just till you run out of movement or actions and so forth and what you're doing, and especially starting the game. You're gonna probably be moving around quite a bit, revealing tiles, trying to deal with the monsters, picking up items, getting ready, trying to find your boat, right? So, and then after all the players go, the monsters go or the stage goes. And the first thing that happens is that you check for a seismic event. You're gonna be rolling dice to see if you match the values. If you do, all the players are gonna take damage. Maybe the ground opened up, whatever it is. So, and then the monsters are gonna move if there are any out there already. And they'll move and attack and they're always gonna go after the closest and there's something specific about the monster that forces them to do otherwise. And as you're fighting monsters and they use their dice to roll, they might flee because they rolled so badly. Speaking of rolling badly, if you roll a one yourself as the player when you're attacking and so forth, you will take a damage. But if you roll a 20, then you'll do an extra point of damage to the enemy. So that's just a quick look at this dungeon crawl, I'll give you some of the basics. Obviously the monster's gonna vary in how you engage with them, and it does become dire after a while. You all need to be contributing going after these monsters because that is one of the keys to success defeating them all, revealing all the tiles, and doing whatever the card calls for. Once you do, then you flip over the resolve and see what happened and what you'll go on to next, going to the second stage or the third stage, or maybe you're just playing one of the stages at random. It just doesn't matter how and where you wanna engage with the game. But I do like the progression going from stage one to stage two, stage three. And the thing is, again, that this is straight up just such an easy game to take pretty much anywhere. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower Paid Preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form, so keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, you know, this little dungeon crawl, I keep the original game in my car, so I have it with me at all times almost, as I go to lunch or whatever, it really is a portable dungeon crawl. I really like that aspect for sure. But don't let the size fool you. There is a challenge here. You have to work together to defeat those monsters. Definitely, they can be pretty intense at times. And I like the introduction of the boat, it adds a lot to the story and how you battle from the boat as you move over monsters and so forth over the water. A lot of fun and definitely the, the different types of monsters keep it fresh and engaging as well. And I really do like the new characters, especially Forge. I'd probably use him even in the original game. Forge is really cool. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.